everyone. This is Jason, and I want to dive in today with MIDI and multi-instruments. Many DAWs can actually do multi-instruments, which is great for both live performance and for any kind of MIDI that you want to do on one track and then later explode or transform into separate audio tracks. And I know for workflow reasons, there's uh, different, different ways and reasons why you would want to do this. So let's dive in. I am going to start with a fresh project here. In, I called it multi-instrument here in Studio One. I'm going to go to Browse. And I'm going to pull open. This is, this is a classic kind of thing here. Uh, I have a grand piano, so I'm going to just drop it in here. And uh, here it is. Now, I like to name everything. So I often will like to name things. I now have grand piano there. That way I know exactly what the heck I'm doing. Now, I'm not done. Then, let me just scroll up here. I found a bass that I kind of liked, and I'm going to drag it to the same instrument track here, so track one, and this is sometimes called an instrument pane or an instrument rack. There's all kinds of names for it. Uh, I just say, call it track one here, where the instrument is being loaded, and I don't want to load here, though. I want to combine. Load will get rid of the piano. Combine will combine them into a multi-instrument, which is awesome. Now, if I double-click on this, I am going to bring it up here. It's the, it's, here's the bass. And notice that while that's, that's fantastic, and I, can, I could click on each one and pull up a piano and pull up a, the bass here, I want to rename this. So I am going to rename this. I'll just call it bass for now. So that way I know which one's which. If each of these said presents, boy, I'd be lost. I really, you know, I'd be like, oh, boy. So, now that I have a bass and I have a piano here, the problem is when I play, uh, I am, I'm playing with them layered right now. And sometimes you want layered, like a piano with a string pad is a nice layer to do. Well, I want to split them, and it's not with a splitter. You can actually layer many instruments. I'm just going to go down here, and there's a range tool. It's not the most intuitive, okay? And what I'm doing is, for a live performance, this kind of thing is common. Many MIDI keyboards for years are able to do these kinds of things. I want to make this bigger. There we go. Just to get an idea that now, when I'm playing down in the low range on my MIDI keyboard, I am getting just the bass. And over here... <laughs> why is that not showing up over in... Well, each... Each instrument has their own uh, fader here. So I'm going to click on the piano. Now you could see. And that piano is actually just a little bit um, hot. And it's got the range right here too. So I can turn it down if I'd like to. And um, just pull the fader down here. So this is a chance to really work on blending your instruments in the multi-instrument view. Now, uh, again, I like to name everything. So uh, I'm going to name this device bass, and piano. So I know, ex and I'm going to call it multi, that way I remember that it's a multi. Now the other thing would be this, once you have these things set, and color coding could be an issue, in fact I'm going to go ahead and, and really set them apart, and uh, there we go, I've got some different colors going on. I want to store this as a preset, so I don't have to go through all this again, all this naming stuff. Well, there's this little um, preset button here, and you store as preset. And, you know, I'm going to call this Jason Bass and Piano. And I may want to just remind myself this is a split instrument, okay? That means I might want to use it for, I'm going to copy this here. I might want to use this for live situations as well. Now, subfolder-wise... Where do I want to save it? I want to save it in my split folder. Now, you're probably wondering where those are, so I'm going to hit OK. What that means is right here next to, here's the, here's the preset I stored, but this is how you get through the different presets. And if I actually, whoops, go here, there's some built-in ones, as you could see. There is, and I've got a couple of them here, the split one that I just made. There's a Herbie split, probably for Herbie Hancock. And as you click on them, they load up all of the different instruments. It's like, I don't want to be there. I want to be here. There's, there's a tool. Each of these are automation type parameters, but 
I just want to be in the multi-instrument right now. Okay, and this is what's called routing. Now, let me go back to mine. That way, it's there. It's saved. Now, I do recommend you also save these um, somewhere else. So, you could, you could do show in browser and make a copy of all your presets and put them on a cloud driver or a USB drive or something because sometimes when you update your DAWs, they delete your presets. Ah, I know it's unfortunate, but the reason you would want to save them then would be then you've got them in another place that you can quickly get to and open them up and use them. Okay, so there we are pretty easy right now the uh, other thing I like to do is this so you think I'm, I'm naming crazy here well if I look here as I get into and here's my Jason uh, bass piano split I want this naming on my uh, rack or window pane here to be the the one that tells me this is also bass and piano okay now one thing routing wise is this is technically a a bus really so I, I could write the word bus if i wanted to each instrument as we're going to see right now in the mix window as i look if i don't have this stuff clicked over here i click i call it the hamburger <laughs> i click down here and then i go to instruments here and i actually don't even have to have that one there i cannot i'm only seeing when I play bass, I see one channel fader. Well, I like to see all of them. So to turn them on, you click on the little eyeball or dot, and there they are. So when I play the bass, hey, hey, it not only plays on the bass channel, so I have different levels of volume control here. It also plays on the bass bus. Here, this, this one, it says presence. Oh, no, no, no. I have to change that. Got to know what that is, right? This one, notice how both of them, no matter what, are being routed, and I'll show you how and why here. This did this for you automatically when we just drag and dropped them. So I've got the piano and the bass, the ones that I, I was, was messing with. I can get right to them by clicking there, and then they are being routed to the bass and piano bus, which is this, this rack that I combine the instruments on. Now, if you had more than two instruments, you might have three, four, five, whatever, then you would have, you could turn on all of those channels. Why is that important? Because you can say, oh man, my piano is a little too loud, but my bass is okay. Well, that way you have uber control. Whereas if I was just messing with this over here, I was going to turn down and up. I'm turning both of them down and up all together. So that's more of a global volume control. These are the individual instruments. All right, so that's a kind of a pretty super important thing to know. There's other ways of, of labeling these. Now, I also like to, to see many things here. There is a wrench icon. And one of the things is called input controls, the things that are not checked. Let's just say this. I want to have everything available to me. Channel notes is one of them. So I might want to say piano um, uh, range is, and then C3 plus or whatever, and bass range uh, goes to B2 goes to B2. That reminds me, and, and I have to know that, of course, and if I um, go back to my instrument, which I could click on right, I literally just click right there. Here's the piano again. It starts at C3, and the bass goes from the bottom to B2. And again, that's, that's pretty important. And, and the faders are here as well as over uh, here. So as you see, the fader here, as I'm clicked on the bass, matches the fader, channel fader here. In whoop, <laughs> I clicked on it in um, the mix window. Finally, one of the other things that it is important to know. So, say I'm I'm really jamming and I'm rocking along, and I create a uh, track here. Do that right now. Okay, so I've got four bars of a bass. So anything that's being played down here, and just a few chords in the piano. Nothing fancy. I did quantize it, but here it is. Um, 
to it. Okay. Yeah. What if I want to try extracting this to see what I did to the chord track? Well, there is a feature. It's actually here. Extract to the chord track. This is kind of cool. So this is not always perfect, by the way. And please know that uh, since I did something very simple, it did get, I had a C chord. And then right here on beat four, and if I make this bigger, you might even be able to see beat four. Okay, so there's beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. I have a G chord with a B in the bass. That's called an inversion. And I can't believe it caught that. Way to go. And then measure two, I hit an A minor chord. Nothing fancy. And then measure three, I have a half note F chord. And then on beat three, so these are all beats again because I'm in bars, and I have um, F chord going to a G chord, so half note, half note, and then a C chord. What's cool is that might give you ideas to add other parts in here. Now, say you want to start layering other instruments, you can go to the browse menu and keep combining multi-instruments to flush out your arrangement. You're thinking, well, that's great, but... I want to have more control over this. Well, let me show you how you can have more control. You can actually, since you're using multi-instruments, you're working all on one track, really, right now. But there's this really, well, I think it's a neat feature. If I right-click on this panel here, and this is a rack or the instrument or instrument panel, there is a transformed audio track. And it's a wonderful, there's all kinds of features, but that's that's probably one of my favorites. And what it will do is take what I just had, all the instruments that are part of my multi-instrument. Here we go. When I hit it, I get some of these uh, features. Now, if I do any inserts, uh, that would be if I want to insert some effects on it in the mix window, maybe some EQ or some reverb or something, I can render those. I, I don't want to do that right now. The uh, remove instrument. I don't want to do that, and here's why. Here's why I like this preserve instrument track state. When I hit it, you could see I now have both separated here into. I have a piano track here. It's kind of hard to see. There is the MIDI still in the background. So if I was to look at this, here's the edit menu. I'm looking at the audio and the transients. Ooh, that one's kind of big there. But then I'm looking at as well, and the, the yellow is hard to see. That is the MIDI data. And why is that important? Well, here it is, too. You can see a little better here in the bass. One, you could do an arrangement. Say you have 10 different things. You're working in one track, and then you could explode them into multi-tracks. Hence, you know, multi-track. But why did I preserve it? Well, one, this will help me with processing if I do something like this. But preserving-wise... Uh, I could transform it back to an instrument track. Why would I want to do that? Well, say I wanted to go back and work on the arrangement some more. It's it's literally a click of the button there. Now it changed my name. I just noticed that too. I'd have to go back and change that. But another issue is this. Watch this. So I'm going to try to keep this open when I do it. So I have my three channel faders. Now when I click and say transform to audio track, I get those options again. It is going to give me two new um, faders, and those faders, let me just hit play, yeah, here they are right there, okay? Here is the um, piano, and here is the uh, bass, So, but those are audio tracks now, so uh, one thing you might want to look at is how does MIDI translate, so like MIDI velocity, for example? translate to audio and you could see that instead of every single one of these being the exact same size they're all a little bit different and that's good i mean that's like dynamics so that's a, a good thing so there's a little bit of playing around with midi and playing around with multi-instruments last but not least no one ever knows how to grab all this and send it for someone else to look at. So you've got a killer project, and now you're going to send it on to your mixing engineer or whatever. So go to Song, Show Media Folder, and Explore. And the really great thing here is this. I'm going to make this bigger. Media Folder, there, there's nothing in there right now. But if I say, let's go look, 
Looks like I named this an assignment or something. I have a bunch of different folders, file folders, and so forth. Not just a song file, but uh, here's a folder here. It looks like there's a bounces folder. Oh, there's a bunch of bounces I just did. So it bounced them down to different tracks. There's a history folder, keep a track of my history, and so on. So I would recommend either grabbing all of those or go back one more, which is probably easier. Now, before I zip this, don't do it when your project's still open. Leave this. I'm going to move it over here for a second. Go back to your file. Hit save. Hit close. Because most DAWs will freak out if you did something like that. Then go to the folder you want and say, you know, I want to, um, let's see, I'm on Windows. So I want to send these to a zip folder. Boom. Do that. It zips them up into one beautiful folder. That is now a zip file. There it is. It is kind of big. I know. And then that is the single file. And it, it, it keeps all of your files and your file structure in place. So hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much.